Hi, I'm Mark Bedore. Today's Wild West is at Rimrock Ranch in Wyoming, halfway between Cody and Yellowstone National Park. We'll take you for a thrilling ride up in those rim rocks. Plus, capturing the West on camera in a Steckline Photography Workshop. This is fantastic. And we'll show you the source of the stone for Indian peace pipes at the Pipestone National Monument. There's just something powerful about coming down here. Coming up next on today's Wild West. The Wild West, it's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. Welcome to Rimrock Ranch, appropriately named. This Wyoming ranch is tucked away from the world in a Rimrock walled canyon outside Cody, east of Yellowstone National Park. And those Rimrocks have horse trails that switch back all the way to the top of those canyon walls. Wow, this is quite the trail. Yeah, it is. We get way up here. A trail ride here can be quite the adventure. Up, up and away we climbed, pausing now and then to give our horses a breather and to check out the view. Ready? Yep, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> Finally, we're on top to take a look back down at ranch headquarters, the better part of a thousand feet below. The ranch sits at 6,200 feet and we're at about 7,000 right here. Off in the distance, we spot the guests who were taking the easier way back to the ranch. That's a long way down, huh? Yeah, it is. All of us had set out earlier that rainy morning on the breakfast ride a horseback trek out to a campsite for some pancakes, coffee, and other goodies cooked over an open fire. Another perfect batch. No one was too worried about the weather. That's what those bright yellow slickers are for. And the rain does have its advantages. It's nice they even ordered dust control this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was early August, not too cold, and the long raincoats made it all look like a Clint Eastwood movie. Because riding in the rain can be really nice if there's no wind. <laughs> and that's how it is today. Yeah. A little weather makes you appreciate a warm fire and a hot cup of coffee. I'll be on the raid. Simple pleasures, the best kind. That's what a trip to this traditional dude ranch is all about. A lot of horseback riding, family style meals. It's a very family ranch. Kids do very well here. We don't have our own special kids program, but uh, children do things with their parents, yeah, which is it's a family what thing. People that come here want to do. One of the things we like the most is that. This is our family vacation, and we, we didn't want the kids to be sent one way and for us to go another. So it's been lovely having the children riding with us. You know, it's, uh, I wouldn't do it any other way now. Are you having fun? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. That's what I like when he goes down hills and trolls. You like this horse? Yeah. It's great fun to have the kids along, but the younger ones don't always ride with the grown ups. This is not really a child friendly. Kids and parents stuck to the easier terrain on the way home from the breakfast ride, while the more adventuresome types took the switchback trail to the top of the rim rock. But we were all together on the afternoon ride that crossed the north fork of the Shoshone River. That trail through the water was quite the thrill. Taking the horse through yeah, the water? Really the water. That was wild, like kind of I have to say. <laughs> this is the experience of a lifetime for me. I've never done it before and it's been everything I ever expected and more. So how are you liking the riding? I'm loving it. And somebody told me you're 84? That's right. Well, who's counting, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the years just get better. We'd be back in the water later in the week for a rafting trip. The afternoon float on the Shoshone River goes right through the town of Cody. That cool western town is a must-see on a trip to Rimrock. We'll show you why just ahead. Rodeo night in Cody. From the 1st of June to the end of August, every night in Cody is rodeo night. Cowboys and cowgirls compete all summer in rough stock, barrel racing, and other events. Rimrock Ranch owner Gary Fails is a regular in the team roping. I thought we were going to do it, man. I mean, I, we had it going. No silver buckle tonight, but this champion roper has won plenty. 
Cody's a cowboy town through and through with a rich history. That legacy is on display just steps away from the rodeo grounds at Old Trail Town. Everything, everything here is real. <laughs> here you'll find about two dozen authentic buildings from the Old West, plus wagons and other historic memorabilia brought in from all over Wyoming and Montana. We have two of uh, the hole in the wall original cabins and uh, Jeremiah Johnson is buried in the back. You'll see the cabin that was once home to Custer's Indian Scout Curly, an old time general store, a buffalo hunter's cabin, and much more. The saloon over there has the original bullet holes in it. I think it's great that they're preserving history. Absolutely, absolutely. Less than a mile away is the museum known as the Smithsonian of the West, the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. It would take a documentary to do this place justice. The center is home to five separate museums, focusing on Western art, the Plains Indian, natural history, firearms, and of course, Buffalo Bill. Do not miss this American treasure. Buffalo Bill founded Cody in the 1890s. You can still stay at the hotel he built, named for his daughter Irma, a popular place for both breakfast or a drink in the saloon. I built custom saddles. Keith Seidel's saddle shop is right across the street. Most of my saddles will run in the fifteen dollars to $25,000 range. Along with custom saddles, he crafts other fine leather products like this scabbard for a Winchester rifle. This fellow is a Winchester collector, but he likes to hunt with vintage Winchester rifles, and so he's having these made so that he can use them. Saddle grew up in this town where the legacy of Buffalo Bill is alive and well. Cody is, is known for sharing the West to the, to the rest of the world. Uh, Buffalo Bill founded Cody and he took his Wild West show all over the world. And the, the, that spirit of sharing the West with the rest of the world is very prominent here in Cody. The West is everywhere in Cody. There's a cowboy music show at the Cody Theater fine Western art for sale in the Bighorn Gallery, and you can buy a buffalo robe at Native Images. If you like to dress Western, as some of us do, Cody's a great place to shop. The Cowboy Palace is one of many stores that'll be happy to outfit you with boots, jeans, hats, belts, and buckles. Wayne's Boot Shop and the Custom Cowboy Shop are among the other Western stores that can outfit you for a dude ranch visit, and the Dude Ranchers Association in town can help you find the right ranch. Because they're not all the same. So we are here to help you decide exactly what you're looking for and make sure that's the kind of ranch that you get to. We found ours. We'll head back to Rimrock Ranch when today's Wild West continues. It's a sight that never gets old, a stampeding horse herd. At the end of the day, the wranglers of Rimrock Ranch drive the string to their overnight pasture. These animals cover some rugged terrain here in the Wyoming Rockies and take good care of their passengers. We stay on trails, that's how you move in the mountains. But we like to climb up high and, and get a big view and you know, look over to the Bighorns 150 miles away and look over into Yellowstone Park from, from these peaks. Riding the rim of the world. Pretty impressive. Gary Gall rides every day back at home in Michigan. He's here for a second visit to Rimrock and loving the horses. I feel totally confident and comfortable no matter where we go on them that, that, I, that I'm safe. We're going on some pretty crazy trails too. <laughs> yeah, someplace I'd never take my horse. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah real true taste little, of the West out here. A little different ter terrain than we're used to in Florida. Eleanor Tucker and Chris Cooley keep three horses at their home in Florida where they ride English style. So this is different for us, but it's nice. It's, it's just it's nice to switch it up a little bit. And I've ridden on horse trips in Loire Valley, France, and the Ring of Kerry in Ireland, and I've been to the Exmoors. So this is great. This this is up in the top, top top ten for sure. This intimate ranch tops out at just 30 or so guests, but this cozy and rustic retreat wouldn't even be here if not for famed Western artist Frank Tenney Johnson. Right after Buffalo Bill toured the world with his Wild West show, there was a lot of interest in the West. And they had the railroad out here so people had access to the West. And the Dude Ranch all of a sudden just started blooming. There was a lot of Dude Ranches, a lot of places just for people to come. Johnson put up the money to help his cousin and her husband launch Rimrock Ranch back in 1926. But the Depression, World War II, and Johnson's death 
left Rimrock standing vacant until 1955, when Gary's dad traded his Wyoming grocery store for the property. And he got $500 to boot because he, he got the bad end of the deal because the grocery store was a thriving business. The family brought the ranch back to life. And more than 60 years later, this treasured retreat is bringing families back to life every summer. Got the fun part again. I like to hear at the end of the week, this is the best family vacation we've ever had together. I, I, I don't get tired of hearing that at all. The chance to get away in the heart of the mountains with no TV and lots of horses is what a vacation should be. I like the horseback ride myself and the scenery. Now oh, the views are wonderful. Right. The weather's great, hospitality's great, people are great, friendly. I really believe in the ranch as a, as a, like a magical place for families to be. Families just relax and enjoy each other and we, we watch it work its magic on families week after week. These Rimrock walls that have stood watch over this place for eons could tell some tales. They are especially beautiful in the morning, lit up by the warm glow of the sun when the horses are driven in for the day. A timeless routine. It's one the stewards of this special place hope to preserve for generations to come. It feels like a spot that should be shared. It feels like what's happening here is what should happen here always. So we're gonna, hopefully we'll be able to make that happen. We'll have more information on Rimrock Ranch later in the program. The beauty of the West has inspired many an artist, including a legendary Western photographer now his family is carrying on his mission of capturing the American West on camera and sharing the secrets of creating great Western images. It's a cool August afternoon in the American West. Horseback cowboys and cowgirls pursue a band of horses in the rugged sagebrush country at the base of an Idaho mountain range. Looks like a scene out of the Old West, except for all the photographers and that drone up in the sky, capturing some aerial video. This is fantastic, awesome setting. This beautiful setting is just another great photo op for the very fortunate few attending a Steckline photography workshop. Incredible, actually, you couldn't have better, could you? Photographers from beginners to seasoned pros come from all over the country to the Steckline family's Horseshoe Bar Ranch outside Mackey, Idaho to hone their skills and learn new ones while shooting a variety of great Western scenes staged with real working cowboys and cowgirls while getting one-on-one -on -one instruction from a pair of accomplished professional photographers. Brothers Drew and Taylor Steckline are carrying on the Western photography legacy and the workshops started by their father, David Steckline. Known as the photographer of the American West, David, who passed away in 2014, was an international advertising photographer for the biggest names in corporate America but his true passion was the West. He spent 35 years photographing his Idaho ranching neighbors and cowboys and cowgirls throughout the West. Photography that produced dozens of acclaimed Western coffee table books, plus fine art prints, calendars, and more. It's been a transition, but I think we're doing great and everything seems to be moving on and I think he'd be proud of what we're doing. Taylor and Drew grew up on the sets of advertising photography shoots with their dad, who put them to work. And so we'd have different jobs, whether it's driving a car for a car commercial or holding up the re reflectors or uh, loading film. So we've been around it our whole life. Today, these young men are following their father's footsteps, although Drew at first had other ideas. And I kind of went off on a different path and really didn't want to do what my dad was doing. And then the next thing I knew, I was living in Utah, working in the same restaurant that he used to do dishes at up at Alta. And then I was shooting photos and I was getting my film developed by his mentor that developed his film. And then um, on top of that, I was hanging out with all of his ski bum buddies that were ski bums back in the day, but now they're um, managers of the resort. So I was working with them to go get photos early morning. And so at that point I realized that I probably shouldn't fight the path and <laughs> just go with it. So I want you to shoot like a 20, 25th, 50th, 100th, and shoot all those different exposures. And then you can kind of figure out what sort of motion blur that you like. 
After a 10-year career as a professional skier, Drew now devotes himself to commercial photography, as does Taylor, who both enjoy sharing their expertise with their workshop students. Yeah, Drew and I both shoot professionally. I mean, this is really just a side job for us. We do it because we enjoy it and, you know, get to meet people, but Drew and our main source of income is advertising. One of the great things about a step line photography seminar are all the great photo ops they set up for you, like this Sunday morning team roping with real working cowboys and cowgirls showing off their stuff. The weekend seminars are offered about a dozen times a year. They include a pair of advanced intensive professional video courses using the RED digital cinema camera. But today, the focus is on still photography, and there's a lot to learn. Getting ready for the good stuff. Beginning with how to protect your camera on a rainy Saturday morning. All it takes is a garbage bag and some tape. And then when you're done, you can... Outside, cowgirl models Kendall Tibbetts and Corey Shiner, both world champion ranch ropers, are settling up in the rain. Whether the steck lines consider perfect conditions for photography. I think the harder it rains, mm -hmm. the better. I don't know, it just gives you more moody photos and, I don't know, a lot, a lot more emotional than just regular sunny day, you know. Most of my best shots are on the most miserable days. It just tells a better story. Sunny skies are boring. Drew fires up the smoke machine to add to the ambiance. Smoke, dust, um, yeah, there's a little bit more emotion. I mean, right now, you get an awesome tight shot of the back of the horse there. It looks like it's steaming after a long ride. In getting this story, guys, you need to make sure that you're getting the tight, the medium, and the wide shot. So don't just shoot the same thing every every single time. Is it F-16? Is it darker? Sharon Redland is at her very first Steckline seminar. It's amazing. I've learned more today than I've learned in 20 years of taking pictures. I know how to set it now. I'm so excited. The Wyoming rancher wants to shoot better pictures for the sale catalog her family produces to advertise their cattle. What I've been doing is just shooting on automatic for the last 20 years because I didn't know how to set the settings on my camera and in two days they've got me knowing how to set the settings on my camera and knowing what situations to change the settings at and uh, it's they've been really good at explaining things and showing me instead of just making me read it so that uh, I understand it better. New Win prop. Winchester. Yep. But sometimes the students do the teaching in some surprising ways. Especially because the students don't know all the rules of photography so sometimes they're just shooting because that's what they want to see and you see some, some really unique imagery that you never would see before because it's kind of out of the out of the box because they're just picking up the camera for the first time so i'll just grab a little bit over here taking the picture is just part of the process just like in the old film days the photograph still has to be developed not in a dark room, but in a computer program known as Lightroom. Just gonna zoom in on her face here. I'm just gonna paint in. I mean, the key is not to like overdo it. I think right there without going crazy. Pretty awesome moment. Lightroom enhances a photo, drawing out information captured in a digital image, but left unseen if not properly processed. The difference between before and after can be quite dramatic. The Lightroom program also provides a systematic way of organizing your photos so you can find them. If you can't find your pictures, there's no point in taking them. That's especially important when you're taking hundreds or thousands of pictures. You shot 1,200 pictures this morning? Like yep. Wow. Yeah. Just trying to capture that one special moment. Calendars, books, date books, fine art prints, whatever we can sell. <laughs> you cheat! It's easy to take a lot of shops at this workshop. There's just so many great opportunities. That's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, that was cool. Like this new twist on an Old West card game at the Pack Saddle Saloon, featuring a pair of gunfighters you might not have seen back in 1880. Mean. I can't be mean. There you go. I'm not mean. <laughs> the saloon is inside a barn on the Steckline Ranch, a ranch that's really a photography studio with anything you need to create and shoot any kind of Western scene. Really, we have all the, all the props and everything from all the big jobs that my dad has done. 
Um, we've shot Chevy, Pontiac, Marlboro, Copenhagen. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And all the props and all the scenarios are all right here. So it's literally like one of the best studios in the West. I mean, all the opportunity for shooting stuff outside is, is right here in our backyard. The smoke, the Colts, and the whiskey may look a little edgy, but it's all just good fun. Time out! I gotta get I'm trying to look mean. This is my mean face. And it makes for some great pictures. We're off on a location shoot here. Yes, we are. The Stecklines recruit their cowboy neighbors to join in the photo shoots. Yo, and don't take a picture of this one yet, have you? No, I haven't. Next door neighbor Bart Wachowski provided the animals in the property for that dramatic sunset shoot of the running horses. He's originally from Poland. Did you always want to be a cowboy in Poland? You know, I think every little buddy, every little kid dreams of being a cowboy at one point or the other, but. The tech lines know all the cowboys because they're cowboys themselves. Taylor drew up horseback in an open ride with the best of them. He showed off his skills during yet another photo shoot in the ranch team roping arena. While we're all loving the opportunity to get these great shots and learn from the experts, the cowboy models, who do get paid, are having a pretty good time themselves. Coming out here, it's always a blast. There's always something fun going on, meeting new people, and what the students get out of it. You know, a lot of these students have never been around this kind of stuff, and it's an eye-opener for them, and it's fun to talk to them about it and tell them, you know, what we do. and Share in the West. Share in the West, yeah. We students joined in the fun, too putting on the Western gear and conjuring up our inner Clint Eastwood. While it's all about learning the art and craft of capturing a great image, the Stecklines Western photography is also about celebrating the culture of the West and the people who still get up and go to work every day on the back of a horse. We do the real deal. I mean, real authentic working cowboys and cowgirls and make everything right and, you know, do it the way it's done every day. And there's no actors, there's just guys doing their job. It's usually pretty fun. They're so good at what they do. Cowboys and cowgirls who ride for this brand have long appreciated the respect the Stecklines demonstrate for their way of life. All these people, they do it every day because they love it. They're not getting rich on it and just want people to, you know, see the West as we know it. There's a lot of honor in what we do and, and how we present ourselves and because people like you come and take the pictures, we're honored. But, uh, you know, if you can delete the ones that show us on the ground, <laughs> your ass in the air, that'd be awesome. As this memorable weekend came to a close, seminar students, friends, and family gathered in the Pack Saddle Saloon. I feel so blessed, and then everybody helped, too. I, I felt like I was part of the family. Where we shared our best photographs of the weekend. Lots of fun to see the pictures shared with new friends who we are likely to see again. After all, 80% of the workshop students here are repeat customers. Cheater on the other end of that. It's so much fun. <laughs> As the sun set at the end of that grand photo shoot of those running horses, it was pretty easy to see why. Fun day, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was super fun. I had a good time. There's more information on Steckline Photography Workshops coming up on today's Wild West. There's another Western art that's been around long before the first camera was even invented, the Native American craft of creating peace pipes from stone, a tradition that lives on today in Pipestone, Minnesota. I've got 36 years of carving time in, and I've been quarrying, I've been on these quarries for over 40 years. Travis Erickson is carving a peace pipe in the shape of a wolf. One of the biggest things about carving wolves is you got to make it look like a wolf and not just a German shepherd of any kind. The Sisseton Wapaton Dakota tribal member works his craft and shares his story in the visitor center of the Pipestone National Monument. We're a small park, but we have a huge history here. The pipe has been a center of Native American spiritual beliefs since prehistoric time. And this was the place where the red stone was found to make them. 19th century artist George Catlin painted the tribes coming to what is now southwest Minnesota to mine the coveted material, which whites later called Catlinite. The stone is easy to work. 
It's got a very nice color to it. In the old days, this was neutral ground where warring tribes laid down their weapons to mine the red stone. Archaeologists have found Minnesota pipestone from Georgia to the Pacific Ocean and as far south as Mexico. And when the Indians were conquered, they did manage to retain the right to work their quarries for their sacred stone. I'm standing in the exhibit quarry outside the visitor center, one of the places where Native Americans have been mining the stone used to make peace pipes for thousands of years. And that tradition goes on here today. There are more than 50 active quarries at the site with a waiting list of some 80 Native Americans. Monument ago, Superintendent uh, Glenn Livermont issues the permits. In the legislation that created the place and gives them the right to quarry, that it's an individual right. So all of the quarries are issued to individuals, not to tribes. And as a part of the permitting process, we do allow those individuals to add on extra names for help in quarrying. I was old enough to remember watching my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my mother was a carver and the uncles were a carver, so I got to see the first three generations carve and quarry here. Pipes carved from the stone range from the relatively simple to magnificent works of art and can be purchased in the visitor center. But it's important to remember their cultural and spiritual significance to Native Americans throughout the generations. I do think about the past, but what I think about in the past is what was their philosophy? What was their spiritual truth? The monument's 300 acres also preserves a remnant of America's tall grass prairie that once covered the Great Plains. Prairie grasses and, and the wildflowers and the rolling hills, and it just takes me right back to all my summers as a kid. The beautiful landscape belies the back-breaking work to unearth the stone beneath the prairie. No power tools are allowed. But for Travis, quarrying and carving has always been time well spent. There's just something powerful about coming down here, being attached to the land, if you will. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in today's Wild West, or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com. Oh,